Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard the Tau 152C3, the German Rank 4 Battle Rating 5.7 Fighter Slash Interceptor Plane. It is an astonishing looking plane and it also has a mean punch. You just not have four 20mm MG 151-20s and in overall 650 rounds between them you also have a central mounted 30 millimeter mk 103 cannon with 90 rounds now i want to talk you through this plan a little bit more than usual and one battle was not enough and i wanted to show you a bit of a kill compilation in the beginning certain scenes how i play and so on this plane by itself is well, uh, yeah, it's it's a Focke Wolf variant. That's what it is. Uh, everything else would be a lie. However, it is um, not that bad in certain respects and not that good in other respects. Especially when you compare it to other nations' aircraft, their capabilities, their firepower, and so on. The firepower is the key to make this plane work. And when I first got my hands on this plane, it it was outright terrible. No no climb rate whatsoever um everything was just garbage about this plane the one thing that was really funny though was the firepower on the 30 millimeter the mine shells at the time did not work at all what i use here is mine shell and um our mine shells or air targets for the 30 millimeter and stealth for the 20 millimeter i love it when it works like that that's just beautiful no doubt about that so um back to the 30 millimeter now you you'd think that for a long barrel 30 millimeter you always use practically mine shells and you can lead them better like the M mk 108 that's true that's true however at the time when i got it it didn't work they sparked and did no damage and the 20 millimeters were more effective and what i then used were the h rep rounds and they blew everything apart they they were kind of a little bucked i'd i'd say and i i, I just blew bombers apart with two three hits into the fuselage and it was not just a simple wing rip or something they just disintegrated exploded into a million pieces and were instantly completely dead so you had no um, return shooting from gunners or something like that, just simply dead. You know, defensive flying is always an idea, but when you do it, you should do it right. This is what cost this guy his life. Again, the climb rate was abysmal, uh, no energy retention, no acceleration, was always outclimbed. Um, even in head-ons you couldn't correct the aim these days uh, the plane is obviously fully upgraded and also it seems like the flight model got smoothened since then i haven't flown this plane in a long time and for the first time i also looked at the repair costs nearly twenty thousand silver lines what the hell um that's like like double the price of you know certain chats top end jets not all of them but a good portion of them i mean yeah there are some very expensive german planes there out indeed for example the me 262a1a costs thirty-seven thousand silver lines okay i mean yeah even the event version the me 262a2a costs nearly twenty thousand that's 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 a lot of money to be honest so those those are the kind of planes you struggle to make an instant win but i digress now what about this plane's performance or how you should fly it well like with every german plane from tier even two onwards you should do the swarm tactic by yourself, the plane is not very competitive. It gets uh, out and out accelerated, out turned, out maneuvered, everything. I mean, there are still a lot, a lot of inexperienced pilots uh, in uh, Spitfires and 
other nations planes that just go for the head-on and oh boy I love head-ons in this thing I just love them um, there's a little smoke bug going on but uh, interesting yeah defensive flying it would work if it would have a bit more elevator authority but you always can discourage the enemy by just pulling down and then they just turn away because they don't want to lose their altitude that just brings you so far because then you handed over the entire advantage but what can he do if he's behind you in the first place yeah um this is practically the scene that i wanted to show you on norway where the enemy team had the entire altitude advantage and they immediately gave it away and you can see the german swarm focke wolf bf 109s they cannot really turn with the enemy but you can then scare off enemies from the tail of somebody that is defensive flying and baiting them and preparing them and catch them off guard and so many people lack situational awareness and this is how you can kill them the plane by itself doesn't offer you anything particular one thing that i have to say that the ta 152 c3 has going for it is the high speed lockup german planes practically uh, have the myth of being high speed monsters and the c3 lacks it in terms of acceleration yes you can go fast but it's not really fast and it takes you a long time and to the point that you reach your top speed you get out, out accelerated by other planes that then catch you but you have not already reached your top speed even in a sharp dive it is possible to go like 800 something like this or even higher but you rarely test it. Even with steep dives, catching 7, 750 takes a while. Another plane that I flew recently a bit more often is the Kia 87. And the Kia 87 is just, well, it should be a high speed thing, I guess. But it locks up dramatically at 700 and I pancaked very often. So that is a lockup. The Tau 152 C3 does not have this problem, okay? I mean, it's completely rubbish at low speeds. It can't turn, like, at all. And then the next thing is the oil radiator. I hope we come back to this in a moment. So, but it feels like a... How to say it? Yeah, it, it always keeps that maneuverability. Like, the turn time never really increases or decreases regardless of the speed so that means you do not really have a lock up and that makes this plane maneuverable enough at uh, higher speeds to to make it work but you can't keep that speed for a very long time okay you don't really can't keep it like a chat for example you you have decent energy retention but it's not that good and that is a shame this plane could be an absolute monstrosity if it wouldn't be like kind of sluggish. Now, when I got my hands on this plane and I played it stock, it was absolutely rubbish, completely outrageously bad and just one of the worst planes that I've ever flown. And so to return to it with this bad feeling in mind, I got surprised by how good it now performs in comparison to what I remember because after I sped it I really didn't touch it at all and yeah I guess um, in this respect thank you America without your bomber spam this plane still would not be sped it I have my usual kind of ritual on Norway to climb for the bombers shoot one or two of them down then uh, if I'm damaged I can still land and rejoin the fight later on but if i that was by the way a nice um, mixed battle at night over the english channel <laughs> lovely um but i digress the thing is that would not just pay the bill for a repair if you get shot down again it's very expensive in my opinion but it also you know gives you a kickstart because then you are at altitude and you kind of um, can return the fight that then takes a place over the middle airfield so Norway is 
is really great. It, at this point, I could ramble on for how awesome mixed battles can sometimes be, although it's not very beloved by the rest of the realistic community. I have to say we waited so long for uh, new maps in realistic and reworks and so on that, you know, mixed battles offer you, you know, new paths of engagement and when you then face other opponents than usual, sometimes it breaks a bit of the the matter of the known and you're a bit thrown into the unknown. It's not really arcade plus, although sometimes it seems like that. You know, there are two types of mixed battles, really arcade plus and then um, really rubbish battles and that you don't like. Arcade Plus is in my opinion not really an insult, but that is open for discussion and on your personal opinion. I understand people that don't like it. But let's come back to the Tau 152 C3. Why do I make a video on this plane? Well, because it's a different plane than the other one in the line, the first in the continuous line of the Focus the A1. Now, I ranted a lot about the A1 being actually the best, but then having so many oil cooler problems and death by so-called realism, yada, yada, yada. Many people agreed with me. Some of them disagreed and said, oh, that's what they practically said is, oh, you're saying hypocritical nonsense and so on and learn to play, get good, you know, the nice comments. <laughs> um, but what about the C3? Well, first of all, I think you can summarize it with the, with the explanation of the first few minutes of the battle, what, how you should do it, and that actually tells you all about it. It is an interceptor, so it gets on all maps an interceptor spawn. So it spawns at altitude with a good portion of speed that you can use to rapidly climb and actually be able to intercept bombers, which is a really nice thing because while this plane has a decent climb rate, it's not good enough to give you an advantage as a boom and zoomer or energy fighter, whatever you want to call it. The next thing would be uh, that you have to use manual engine control to keep um, to cool the engine because this thing just will cook. And there comes the comparison to the kind of Focke Wolf A1 again into it. You can't control the oil radiator. I don't know if this is historically accurate, like so-called semi-historically accurate on the A1 that kills it after a time and you must not use mech at all. In this plane you actually can climb with mech to cool the engine down for the climb. The drag from the radiators is not really that feelable at climbing speeds. At high speeds, yes, it has a definite, definite impact. And then you should go to the automatic uh, engine control. But for climbing, this is what makes it work to a certain degree. Now, this is the battle that uh, I actually finished alive <laughs> with a decent amount of kills. There was um, a battle that I came very close to have an actual an ace in it. And uh, then I was team killed because somebody thought I would put it on YouTube and he did not really play that well. And uh, so he wanted to not me put that video on YouTube so um, yeah he team killed me and said oops sorry misclicked yeah you just do not really misclick and somebody dies I mean come on if if you're a dickhead just admit it because if you don't even admit it you're a liar as well but hey I'm not salty Ooh, a new jingles fan package okay I digress <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can't get rid of this joke. Back to the plan. The mech on this plan has an evil surprise for you. Now, there is always a kind of um, a temperature at which uh, every plane overheats in terms of water or oil, where it goes from white to yellow, orange, and then into the red, and then to the blinking red. And at least at this point, you should cool the engine down, either via mech or while cutting the throttle. Now it's a bit unfortunate if you have to cut the throttle via an engagement, so just the mech is left. But if the mech can interact with all the systems or the uh, mech is not good enough because the engine just produces too much heat, yeah, you have problems. 
But here is the problem with the Tau 152 C3, and that is completely nonsense in my opinion, and just outstandingly stupid. At some point, the critical temperature jumps down, and suddenly you are in the deep red, and you have to cool the engines under all circumstances. And that is just when it jumps and you're in an, in, in an engagement, that, that is just, wow. It, it's about in the 10 minute mark, you know, and that, that is just evil, you know. So to summarize the Tau 152 C3, it was awful when it came out, especially when it was stock. The ammunition performed differently. Now you have one of the highest centralized and most evil, dangerous burst mass in the game for a prop plane. Uh, you love head-ons. Mm, defensive flying works yeah, good enough against an experienced player. An experienced player just cuts the throttle and waits up until you are on the deck and then shoots you down. But you need to do swarm tactics, okay? Stay in the vicinity of uh, your allies, you know, the blue planes, the green planes, and um, try to go head on with as many planes as well. I don't like to give this advice to going to head on, but that is what this plane is about in War Thunder, it seems. Not my words. Okay, there were, but you get the point. I like the plane. The, it, it just looks amazing. The visuals are just amazing. The long body, the long fuselage, the wings, the guns, the, the, even the propellers. Everything looks astonishingly beautiful. This is a completely different kind of a design approach, in my opinion, than uh, my beloved P-47s, which I really love, or even the Kia 87, which just looks like a porn star. In, shape of a plane. I love it. I love it. And, <laughs> okay, uh, I better cut this out. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I leave it in the video. Anyways, uh, as you can see, I now follow this B-17, shoot him down. Bombers take an awful amount of ammunition and a lot of firepower, but I kind of I'm designed for that now the high altitude performance as well is nowhere near comparable to those of for example Griffin Spitfires or Bearcats beer cans you know or Japanese planes but you know this was never supposed to be a high altitude fighter this should be the job of the H1 the Tau 152 H1 one of the oldest planes within the German tech tree however it can't do this as well now, if you had a look at the temperature uh, a few seconds ago, you saw that I actually went into the red. Now, the last two enemy players are far away on the deck and I am at high altitude. I can cut my throttle and just sail in with the radiators open. You do not really have this kind of possibility all the time. Okay, So, you have to look at your power output at your throttle and so on to keep the engine alive because again it has kind of this 10 minute marker and then it just the critical temperature jumps and you know it's weird now about the maneuverability one thing that i just um noticed a few or i remembered actually noticing was the elevator now the elevator kind of the, the flaps on the elevator, if you can call them, they um, have an angle, and according to the angle, the plane turns. Now, even if you go for the keys that control the elevator, the elevator will not fully go to its maximum angle. So, kind of, the flight model is again limited, or is it the instructor? In this case, I don't know, but it's just typical for Focke Wolves. However, when I was in certain maneuvers, suddenly I noticed that the elevator could extend or could have a um, much higher angle than in the normal turn. If somebody knows about this, what that means, or if this is a logical restriction, let me know. I'm highly interested in that. And the last Spitfire decided to go head on. I kind of understand him. He was the last guy alive. 
Now you can see one thing about the Tau 152, it can absorb a little bit of damage. Eventually it will go down like any other plane, but it can take a little bit of damage. The problem is when the damage is one sided to one wing, because then it will get really heavy. All the roll, roll rate is then uh, in the bucket, in the trash. In this case it was symmetrical damage so it was not that decisive and obvious. But when you get hit you have severe maneuverability problems. Nevertheless this is a plane that looks so good, feels so good and when harvesting non-skilled players you can make look it good but eventually it's not the best competitive plane. Oh. It doesn't matter. Oh, by the way, I got my palette icon. This, I guess, was the last one. Um, nice idea, but whatever. So, the results for this plane are 87,515 silver lines and 5,630 research points for the modifications for my four kills, three critical hits and numerous other hits. So that's kind of a nice result. But please remember, this plane fully repaired costs nearly 20,000 um, silver lines and um, I think that's it I hope you enjoyed the kill compilation my rambling at the last battle on Norway where I cut out the climbing path and uh, yeah let me in the comment section know what you think about this swarm tactic objective um, kind of argument I mentioned it a long time ago in my BF 9 k 4 video in one of them uh, where I said that the K4 is a swarm predator and in this respect the Germans kind of get outbalanced in terms of uh, having a lot of firepower for practically no maneuverability. So um, teamwork is decisive, not just in this plan but all German props at higher tiers. Anyways that's it for me today, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, give this video a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more and we will see each other in the skies of what I'm